Well, should we get started, Pastor Rob? Good evening, friends of Peninsula Delaware Conference, lady and clergy, friends all. It's good to have us together once again. It feels like annual conference, and we've got a good crowd here tonight. And we thank you for taking the time and for your interest and for your faithful service to the good Lord Jesus Christ. These are interesting times, but these are some of the best times in the world to do the work of Christ. And I'm reminded of word from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, where Paul says, We are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And so this evening, as we learn about our districting plans, let's keep the work of Christ before us, that we might even do a better job in this new configuration, that in all things, God might be glorified. Will you pray with me? Thank you, dear God, for gathering us from the four winds around this webinar platform, where we can hear some good news, some interesting news, and ask questions. And we thank you for the hard work that's gone into preparing for the redistricting and for the vote that's come at our annual conference to approve this and the faith that that represents. And Lord, as we make these adjustments and plans, we just pray that all the things we do will be done in good order and in the spirit of love and cooperation. So we give this time now to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I'll turn this over to the Director of Connectional Ministries, Reverend Dr. Rob Townsend. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, we're glad that uh, so many folks are showing up tonight. It's about 340 people on our webinar. This is a, a webinar format, so a little different than a Zoom meeting that you may have participated in where you're looking to see your face mm -hmm. and, uh, and be heard. So in a webinar format, only the panelists can be seen. Uh, however, uh, you will be able to participate through the Q&A feature. So if you move your cursor down to the bottom of your screen, you'll see uh, Q&A with two, two boxes and click on that and you'll be able to type a question and we'll be able to, uh, to answer that as well. Uh, the chat feature is a great way uh, to interact with folks uh, on, the, on this Zoom webinar. You can interact with an individual person or a group of people, but we do ask that you keep your questions in, not in the chat feature, but in the Q&A box. That way we can keep track of them and make sure that they are um, that they are answered. We're also recording this and we'll make sure that this is available on the conference website. So uh, many folks, folks in your church uh, that could not make it tonight that want to be able to view the new district plan, uh, this will be available on the conference website and you can view it um, right from the conference website. So that'll be made available uh, hopefully uh, this week and then you'll be able to share it with those that, uh, that weren't able to attend tonight. So what I want to do tonight uh, is share a PowerPoint and share some maps with you. Uh, many of you participated in uh, the webinar formats that we had earlier in the year before annual conference when we talked about this redistricting plan. And we gave you some ideas. And uh, uh, like all things Methodist, we've gone back to the table, taken some of your feedback and changed those ideas. So I want to go over everything with you tonight. So I'm sure you'll have lots of, of, uh, of questions. So you can go ahead and type them now as we're going through uh, and, and we'll have a chance to, to deal with them at the end. So let me go ahead and <clears throat> share my screen. Uh, Doug, you're gonna, gonna have to give me that ability, it looks like. All right, give me one second. All right, try now. All right, thank you. Okay, folks. Um, so this is uh, <clears throat> this is where we are. Uh, this is what we have been uh, been looking at. Um, let's get you on the right path here. Okay, so the Book of Discipline allows for the annual conference to set the number of districts, and the Book of Discipline gives the power of setting the geographical boundaries of each district 
to the bishop. Uh, so the November 2020 annual conference, uh, we took a vote and we set the number of districts at three. So we went down from four districts to three. So the four districts we have now are the Wilmington district, the Dover district, the Easton district, and the Salisbury district. As you can see in uh, highlighted in this map, the red is the Wilmington district, the blue is the Easton district, the yellow is the Dover district, and the Salisbury is, uh, is Salisbury district is green. What we shared with you uh, throughout the summer, uh, we had an interaction with our laity and we had an interaction with our clergy. And then we had our four district pre-conference briefings. And then we had another night just for uh, this redistricting idea. And this is what I shared with you all, uh, the proposed districts. The blue uh, is the Northern district, the red uh, we were calling the Central district and the green the Southern District. So it extended, uh, it extended the, the current Wilmington District down into Kent County, Maryland, uh, as well as along in the, um, the Smyrna, south, just south of Smyrna, the Cheswold area. And then uh, it took the Eastern District over to uh, the south of Dover area in the, into uh, the Georgetown area and then Millsboro, Long Neck, all of that area was a part of what we were going to call the Southern District. Um, now with that, we got a lot of feedback. And uh, during those seven webinar presentations, the issues that were raised were one, the names of the districts. Uh, we talked about the Northern District, the Central District, and the Southern District. We got a lot of feedback from folks that uh, were concerned about being called a Southern District. Um, Again, the geography fits northern, central, and southern. Uh, we looked at what our neighbors were doing. The EPA conference, uh, their four districts are uh, north, south, east, and west. And we looked at the Baltimore-Washington conference, and their, uh, all of their districts are geared, uh, all of them are named uh, geographically, like Baltimore Metro or Baltimore County or Annapolis or uh, Washington uh, East or West. Uh, but we realized that some folks that were in the Southern District did not like the idea of being in a Southern District. Uh, again, we're pretty polarized society right now and the idea of being called Southern uh, was an issue for some folks. And we also heard back from many of you, uh, one of the, the main things that came up in the feedback was an uneven number of churches per district. Uh, the way this map is outlining things uh, there are 115 churches in the Northern District. There are 143 churches in the Central District, and there are 156 churches in the Southern District. And you'll recall that I tried to give you some statistics that showed uh, the difference between our current district number of churches and what this would be. And then it wouldn't be a, a big increase uh, for the Salisbury uh, district superintendent has uh, the most and the Eastern district has the most churches. But when we looked at charges, it was a little more on the even side. Um, the definitely the Wilmington district right now is our smallest district. So they would have seen the biggest increase. But uh, we heard from you um, thinking about the work of a district superintendent, recognizing that the geographical area and the number of churches could increase based on the amount of time that's spent on video conferencing and as, since COVID hit, we've learned to do uh, district superintending a little differently since that's happened. So a lot of our, a lot of the take-ins that DSs do, the takeouts, uh, the supervision of pastors, the charge conferences all this year have taken place uh, over video, uh, much like the Zoom meeting that were, that are taking place now. So we still felt like that they were not even. So in, in, in order to deal with them, uh, this is what we thought about doing. Possible solutions uh, for the district names. We wanted to we thought about naming the districts after historical figures and taking these three and naming them after three very prominent figures in our Delmarva history, uh, Methodist history. Uh, we kicked around the idea of naming uh, the blue area, the Northern District, if you will, after Bishop E. Scott, <clears throat> who was uh, 
uh, senior bishop at the time of his passing, but he was raised in the Odessa, Delaware area uh, and was very integral in, in uh, the, the Methodist movement. The red area would be named after Harriet Tubman. Uh, she obviously grew up in uh, Bucktown outside of Cambridge, which would be encompassed in the uh, red district there, as seen there. And then the green, that green district, or what we were calling the Southern District, or what is now the Salisbury District, we would name after Charles Albert Tinley. There's a typo there. It's Charles Albert Tinley, uh, who we knew, uh, we know, uh, grew up around uh, Berlin, which would be encompassed in that district. We also thought about naming these districts after Native American tribes and thinking about the Native American populations that live on Delmarva and in these specific areas. Uh, in the northern area, uh, we thought about naming it after the Lenape uh, tribe, the Lenny Lenape tribe uh, that is prominent in New Jersey, but also in the northern part of Delaware. The Danicoke tribe, uh, which is uh, headquartered uh, around the Millsboro area, but that would be in that central area. And then the Akahonic, uh, which is uh, currently uh, headquartered in outside of Marion Station, outside of the Crisfield area, which would be in that southern part. So we wanted to, we thought about honoring our Native American heritage within the bounds of Delmarva. <clears throat> Another important assumption that we had to deal with as we, um, as we talked about this uh, was the idea that we will soon be changing Episcopal areas. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about this and um, I just want to let you know that, uh, you know, again, the full disclosure, there's been a lot of talk at the jurisdictional level of how to deal with uh, the number of bishops that we have in the Northeast jurisdiction. And uh, one of those ways uh, to, to uh, change things up, if you will, in order to spread more bishops out uh, is to have us where we are now, the Peninsula Delaware Annual Conference, yoked with EPA, we're our own conference, our own annual conference, but we share a bishop. Many of you are part of two point charges or three or four or even six point charges where a pastor oversees six churches. Uh, our pastor, Bishop Peggy Johnson, oversees two churches. The Episcopal area, that's called the Philadelphia Episcopal area, has two churches in it, if you will, the Eastern Pennsylvania Annual Conference and the Peninsula Delaware Annual Conference. Uh, one of the ways that the jurisdiction has talked about rearranging things would have us share a bishop with the Baltimore Washington Conference instead of the Eastern Pennsylvania Conference. Um, those of you that have been around a long time recall that we once did that uh, and it would be a reshuffling of um, annual conferences so we would share a bishop with Baltimore Washington. doesn't mean that we would merge with the Baltimore Washington Conference. That is not on the table at all. Um, Jurisdictional delegates know better than to do that, uh, as they have done that in the past, and uh, there's been a lot of struggles with that. Uh, they would continue to be uh, two separate annual conferences, but sharing one bishop. And again, with that assumption, if, if we go with sharing a bishop uh, with the Baltimore-Washington annual conference, looking at the way the Baltimore Washington Conference maps out their districts, they do it geographically as well. So thinking about all those things led us uh, to decide a new map. Uh, this is the new map, and this is the final decision uh, that the cabinet has uh, made along, or the bishop has made uh, with the advice of her cabinet. Uh, we've grouped together the Delaware churches in the Delaware district, uh, seen here in the red dots, uh, I've seen, seen here the blue dots, uh, the red dots are the upper shore and the green dots are the lower shore. Uh, again, having grown up on Maryland's eastern shore, uh, those are terms that we use, upper shore and lower shore. Uh, we do not refer to the lower shore area, Salisbury area as, the, as southern Maryland or the southern shore. If you're a Marylander, you know that Southern Maryland refers specifically to areas south of Annapolis, the La Plata area, that, that area. Uh, so we never refer to that as Southern Maryland, but we do say upper shore and lower shore in talking about the Eastern shore. And of course the Delaware churches uh, would be together. So three districts, the Delaware district, 
the Upper Shore District and the Lower Shore District. Again, that works well with a current marking with uh, a link being linked with Eastern Pennsylvania Annual Conference, and it works well with the potential for a future yoking with the Baltimore Washington Conference. So that deals with the name problem. And this also deals with the number problem. This is a more equitable distribution of churches. As you can see, the Delaware district would have 141 churches. The upper shore district would have 132 churches and the lower shore district would have 136 churches. Um, so it's a little different in terms of <clears throat> what is currently the Easton district and um, Reverend Elmer Davis uh, having what it would be able to go all the way up to Cecil County um, and include that as part of the area uh, that he serves uh, with Reverend Kim He uh, Sa receiving a church appointment at St. John's in Seaford. Uh, Reverend Joe Archie, the, what it currently the Wilmington district would be over the Dover district. So that would uh, take him well below the canal, but take him into Sussex County as well. Again, um, we've seen with COVID, um, a lot of the dealings that we've had to do with, uh, with COVID, we dealt with the governors, uh, Governor Carney in Delaware and Governor Hogan in Maryland. So a lot of those restric restrictions were uh, state restrictions. So we feel like grouping them together all of the Delaware churches together would be would be helpful and beneficial. And then of course the Lower Shore or what is already a very large Salisbury district, there's not a lot of changes in that, uh, still below uh, the line in Delaware or the Southern Delaware border. Uh, there are a few churches around the corner uh, that is already a part of the Salisbury district, but the Salisbury district would be picking up uh, some of the churches in Lower Dorchester County, and I'll, I'll share those with you as well. But this is a, a more equitable map than we originally had drawn up. Uh, again, it gives us names, geographic names that are uh, pairing with either of those conferences, either EPA or Baltimore Washington, uh, makes it friendly. And at the same time, this gives us uh, a more equitable distribution of churches. So uh, what I want to do is uh, share with you um, an interactive map. So I can, I can show you um, a little cleaner uh, lines of the boundary, okay? Um, okay, <clears throat> so this map shows the same, the same dots that we just, uh, we just talked about. Um, and I'm going to just increase it a little bit and show you some of the borders. Okay. So down here along the Sussex County, um, Maryland border, uh, these churches are currently, if you can see my, uh, my cursor, uh, this curse, this church is Bethel. Um, so that's, uh, Bethel in uh, Gumboro. That's along a line with the, the line, uh, charge. So that would, that would all still stay in what is the Delaware district. This is Selbyville, Salem, Selbyville, Zor. Uh, these churches are currently in, Wilson is currently in the Salisbury district. These churches would remain uh, under Reverend Tina Blake. Um, this is uh, Melson and Delmar. As we move over, this area is a little tricky. It is tricky right now. So this is the, this is the corner of Delaware. Uh, the right angle piece of Delaware, if you will. Um, these churches are technically in Delaware, but they are in the Salisbury district right now. Uh, so that's St. Stephen's in Del Mar. If you go down the street in, in Del Mar, uh, one church is on the right side of the street and uh, one church at Union is on the left side of the street. And um, so again, that's the dividing line for the state, but they're both in the Salisbury district right now. So they would be in in that lower shore district. Uh, these churches here, Mount Nebo uh, and Mount Hermon in Columbia, uh, they're all part of uh, the San Domingo area and those churches uh, currently worship uh, right here. So uh, they would all remain a part of the same charge. So we're not splitting up any charges, but they would be in the lower shore district. 
uh, as well as as we kind of move this up, these churches here are the northernmost part of the Salisbury district right now. This is Wheatley's. Uh, this is Galestown. Uh, again, they were they were once together on a charge. They're separate now. But even though they're in Dorchester County, uh, they are considered kind of that sharp town address right there on the Nanticoke River. Uh, so they these churches would remain uh, under uh, Reverend Tina Blake or what we would be calling the lower lower shore. And as we move around, these would be um, these would be some of the changes that we would have. So along this line, Route 50 here. So this is Vienna. This is currently the Eastern District. Now this would go to the lower shore. Uh, this is also Vienna. This is Wesley. Um, uh, this is Reeds Grove. Reeds Grove Zor. Uh, these would all be new to uh, Reverend Blake. Uh, but these would be these would come go to the Salisbury District Office, or I'm sorry, the the Lower Shore Office, which is now the uh, Salisbury District Office. So Mount Pleasant, uh, you have Friendship Aries, you have Christ Airy, uh, Waters Fork Neck, uh, you've got Bucktown, and then uh, all of these churches down here in Fishing Creek. Um, so that's Hoosier. Uh, you've got John Wesley. You've got uh, Crapo and St. John's, Toddville Zion, uh, Bishop's Head, St. Thomas, all the way down uh, to Bethany there. You've got Wingate. Uh, this is also Elliott's, which is a, a part of the Vienna Charge, which would be north up this way. Um, uh, you've got Hoopers here, and then the line would be right here. So these churches would be part of the Upper Shore. Uh, so again, these churches relate more to Cambridge. So all of the churches in Cambridge would go in the upper shore. I know Cambridge folks don't consider themselves in the upper shore. I get that. Uh, but currently your district office is in Cambridge and uh, we wanna make sure that, um, that these churches continue in the upper shore under the ministry of, of Reverend Davis, but it would also include these, uh, the Whitehaven, um, Milton, you've got Madison and you've got uh, Smithville New Revive uh, out towards Taylor's Island. Uh, Antioch, Town Point, all of these churches here, uh, Spedden and uh, Beckwith, Cornersville, and then all enough to trap, and then all the way up. So you, you'd follow that map all the way up. All of these churches that would stay right on the line here. So Mary Dell would continue with uh, the same grouping of district folks. Uh, right now, the line for Easton District is right here. Uh, right, uh, the, the, uh, border between Cecil County and Kent County. So all of the churches in Cecil County that are currently part of the Wilmington district would now be a part of the Upper Shore district. So that's uh, that's the line. Everybody else that's currently part of the Wilmington district remain where they are. And then again, uh, where the line is now would would extend all the way down uh, through Sussex County to, to the border. Okay, I'm going to stop uh, Sharon, and uh, I'm going to go to um, I'm going to go to questions uh, because I am sure that you have a, a ton of questions. Um, so let's go let's go through those. And uh, again, I can pull up the map again if you need that. Whatever whatever's happening. So um, let's go with let's go with our questions. Um, Okay, uh, Reverend Beth Heller asks, would that mean we change to a different jurisdictional area? That's a great question, Beth. Uh, no, we would still be a part of the Northeast jurisdiction. Baltimore, Washington is so the Southern boundary of the Northeast jurisdiction that goes all the way up to, to, uh, to Boston and, uh, and New York. Uh, the Southern boundary are the West Virginia Annual Conference, the Baltimore, Washington Annual Conference and Peninsula, Delaware. So we would still be in the Northeast jurisdiction. Uh, Bob asked, what is the distribution of church members between uh, the three districts? I, I don't have that figure, uh, but this would be the work of the, um, the district superintendent uh, is not really equated with how many members there are, but how many churches there are and how many pastors the district superintendent relates to. Mm -hmm. uh, Kim Hockman asked, will these charts be available uh, outside the video recording? Uh, yes, though, um, we'll put the PowerPoint up with it. Uh, the interactive map that I showed you will not be there, but uh, we'll also give you an Excel spreadsheet 
that will have every church in the annual conference and it'll be listed with its old district and its new district. Uh, so that will be made available. Uh, church Hill asked district superintendents be supported with the increased workload. Um, uh, again, I'm not sure if you're, if you're talking about uh, administrative support, uh, financial support. Uh, again, this, um, this original resolution to go from four to three came from cabinet. So the district superintendents were all aware of this. They all support it um, and they all had a hand in, in crafting this. So they're all on board. Uh, what are the real cost savings and redistrictings? Well, uh, we went over that uh, before the vote, but basically uh, we're looking at a $300,000 uh, savings annually uh, by, by going down a district. Uh, Robert Johnson asked, what is the anticipated, what are the anticipated locations of the district office? That's a, that's a great question. Um, currently, our uh, district superintendents are all living in district parsonages. Uh, so we are gonna keep them in their spots where they are. So the Easton district has a, a parsonage uh, in Easton. Um, the Salisbury district has a parsonage in Salisbury, the Dover district in Magnolia. And the Wilmington district parsonage is, is in Middletown. Um, uh, we are, uh, the board of trustees will be working with um, dealing with the Dover District Parsonage, uh, but I know that Reverend Archie and Reverend Davis and Reverend Blake will be staying in their residences uh, when their term as district superintendent will be up. Um, the Board of Trustees will be taking up um, some provisions for housing allowances. And again, not sure what that'll do, but that's up to the Conference Board of Trustees. Uh, but if the ability to give a district superintendent a housing allowance to become more centrally located than, than what they are right now, uh, per their new district, uh, we'll be able to allow them to do that. Um, so in terms of their, in terms of their offices and where churches and laity would be having to go and drop off paperwork at offices, um, again, a lot of that is done through email now, but there are certain things that just get dropped off. I, I, we, we all get that. Um, so uh, we believe that the Lower Shore District is not changing that radically. Um, picking up a couple churches in, in Dorchester County, uh, Vienna and, and um, Cooper's Island and so forth. So uh, they would still relate to the office at Christ Church in Salisbury. Uh, however, the Easton District and the Wilmington District offices that are currently in Cambridge and in uh, a Grace Church in Wilmington, uh, we believe that the district superintendents will probably set up uh, a, an auxiliary office, if you will, a church uh, somewhere for, in the north uh, for Reverend Davis and somewhere in, in the south or probably Sussex County for um, for Reverend Archie, but that's totally up to them. Uh, and I can give you the model that Reverend Archie uses right now in the Wilmington district. Um, he usually meets with Delaware pastors at Grace Church in downtown Wilmington. And then he normally meets with, with the pastors in Cecil County over at uh, Elkton United Methodist Church. So he goes uh, to them. So I would imagine uh, that Reverend Davis would probably do something similar uh, in the north end of, of his new district. Uh, again, possibly in the Elkton area, I do not know. And, and I would imagine that Reverend Archie would do the same either at the Dover. Uh, there's space available at the conference office in Dover uh, for both of those pastors, but that's going to be totally up to them and how they, uh, how they deal with it. Uh, Reverend Lawrence Purnell asked, I served John Wesley in C for Delaware and Mount Hope in, in Herlock. Uh, which, which district will my charge be under? You will be in the, the Delaware district out of Seaford. Uh, Greg Vick, Vickers asks, will the interactive map be available on the website? No, it will not, but I'll give you the, uh, I'll give you the, the Excel spreadsheet so you'll be able to look at each church. Uh, Larry Josephowski says, I missed where the Delaware district would eventually be seated. Would it remain in Wilmington or move to a more central location? So again, like I said, the, uh, currently the district superintendent would reside in Middletown um, until Reverend Archie's term as district superintendent is up. 
Um, and then a new district superintendent may choose to live somewhere else if there's a housing allowance that's made available and um, we get rid of the district parsonage. But again, that would be up to the conference board of trustees. Um, but as far as offices, uh, I'm quite certain that the, what I talked about earlier would be, would be outlined for him. Uh, Dr. Vanessa Stevens Lee asks, well, would you put the map up again? Uh, sure. <clears throat> Uh, Dr. Lee, I don't know if you want the, um, this map or not. So I give you that map. Okay. All right, back to, uh, back to questions. Um, John asks, is there a typed listing of churches relative to each of the new districts available? Yes, so there's an Excel spreadsheet that, um, that will be made available. Uh, Churchill says administrative support. So again, that would be, we have currently have four districts, four district superintendents, four administrative assistance that go along with those districts. Um, again, that would be uh, a personnel uh, matter that uh, the bishop and uh, the district superintendents would be, would be dealing with, but uh, each district would continue to have an administrative assistant and administrative support. Uh, Jacqueline Ford says, what happens with the Dover District DCOM? Will it dissolve? That's a great question, and I'll uh, make it a broader uh, answer for you, uh, Reverend Ford. Uh, basically, we're going to have to assimilate. Uh, so <clears throat> while the Salisbury District is kind of remaining the same, uh, the Eastern District, Wilmington District, and Dover District are going to have to do, have to do some merging. Uh, we've uh, spent a lot of time talking with our lay leadership and the Board of Laity and how that would relate. I think for the first couple of years, there may be some, some dual positions for a little bit. Um, but there will be some emerging of uh, the district committees, particularly the committee on ministry. So there would be a Delaware district committee on ordained ministry, and there would be an upper shore district uh, committee on ordained ministry and a lower shore district committee on ordained ministry. Uh, so uh, those district superintendents set those committees and they nominate those uh, individuals and I'm sure there will be some merging of folks that are serving in particular churches that, uh, that serve, let's say, let's say a person that serves on the Wilmington District Committee on Ordained Ministry, but serves a church um, in Rising Sun or Elkton or somewhere uh, in Cecil County, Maryland, uh, they would be in a new district. So uh, I'm, I'm certain that the district superintendent uh, would probably invite them to continue to serve on that new committee but I cannot speak for them. It is completely their purview to be able to nominate those committees. Uh, Dr. William Wallace, uh, the Eastern Shore of Maryland and Delaware have rich histories to not name the districts after persons and groups important to these areas is both insulting and dishonoring their contributions. Uh, I appreciate that, Dr. Wallace. Um, I'm a history buff and that's why I came up with those, uh, with those names. Um, so I definitely, definitely thought about that and that was certainly on the table for a while. Katrina Bailey, uh, where would Mount Hope and John Wesley fall? Just, just answer that one. Uh, you would be in the, the Seaford um, or the, uh, the Delaware district. Aaron Shutt, have there been any decisions made regarding the structures of each district decom? Just answer that one. Um, Marie Davis, have the costs of additional housing been included in the potential $350,000 cost savings? It's just $300,000 in savings. Uh, but yes, that was part of the of the costs that we talked about when we went from four districts down to three. Pastor Hayden, how does this affect district committees? Uh, when will the new committee assignments be, li be listed? Uh, again, we talked about that and the district superintendents will be coming up with a new list of, of assignments for that. Anonymous attendee, how can we support the DSs during this transition other than prayer? Of course, I think prayer is, is the number one thing. Um, uh, but again, being flexible, 
uh, I think it's, it's important. Uh, churches and, and laity relating to a new hub uh, is going to be um, is going to be a change. And we are Methodists and we don't like change. So um, we're going to have to be a little flexible there. Uh, where is the district office located at, at Cambridge? Um, uh, yeah, it's right, it's, uh, it's right in. Isn't it in Denton? I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, yeah. it is. It is in Denton. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, Very nice. <laughs> um, uh, Joanne Adams, uh, will superintendents receive more pay with this change to three districts? They should. Uh, thanks, Joanne. Uh, and yes, there was uh, an increase this year starting in January to anticipate this change. Uh, Bernadette uh, Kennedy, I hope I said you pronounced your name correctly. Mm -hmm. Can you display the map with the name of the districts? Um, yes, I will do that one more time. Um. Okay. So again, this is the Delaware district, the upper shore district and the lower shore district. All right, sorry, in order to, uh, in order to see the questions, I gotta, I've got to, uh, to be able to go back. So just go back from that. Uh, District Superintendent Archie says, have patience with your DS. Uh, yes, uh, that would be a, one way that you can support your district superintendents, have, have patience for them or with them. Uh, Howard Sharps asks, how will redistricting impact small churches with small memberships, closure or mergers? It shouldn't impact them at all. Uh, again, if a church if chooses to, to close, uh, that is a part of, of the church uh, membership, decide that, but um, this redistricting wouldn't have anything, uh, any push on churches to close. Joyce Bowser, uh, will this lower our yearly benevolence amount? Um, again, it's a matter of, of taking the same, you're going to have a lower uh, apportioned amount per district and per your annual conference apportionments. So they will get a little bit lower because we're basically cutting the budget by this much. Anonymous attendee says, just a thank you to you, Bishop Johnson and the cabinet for your hard work at this. Thank you. Uh, Frank, Robert, um, thank you, Rob. You and your team have made a good process clear. Thanks. Another anonymous attendee, what happens to the Dover District Board of Laity? Again, same thing. Uh, as I said before, the district boards, there'll be some, some uh, assimilating, there'll be some merging, uh, but your conference lay leader, Carlene Phoenix, and your associate, uh, lay leader Yvonne, she's going to, uh, all of that is going to be part of, of their decision making and their helping because we have a lot of gifted and talented laity and we want to utilize all their gifts. Uh, Janelle Starling, would Union Wesley be in the lower shore? I was trying to figure out according to the map. Uh, yes. Uh, when will this happen and how will it affect the CLM program from Brenda? Okay. Uh, this will take place July 1st, July 1st of this year, 2021. Uh, the CLM program, again, a lot of the things that we're doing, I, and I, I don't know if that was, the question was asked by Brenda, and I'm assuming that was Brenda Till, Tillman, uh, our director of our, our CLM uh, program. Uh, but again, a lot of um, Sister Tillman's work has been done across the conference and not just on the district level. So, um, uh, the uh, Board of Laity is the group that um, certifies the CLMs uh, through their educational standards. And then each district uh, looks at them, if you will, they, they interview them. Uh, but uh, the empowerment is at the Board of Laity level, not at the, the District Committee on Ordained Ministry. If that CLM is appointed and serving in the pastoral role over a church, then the DCOM 
has a little more authority over it in over that person in terms of seeing that person annually and um, having updates from them. So that would take place if that CLM is serving as uh, a pastor in the role of pastor. Uh, Bill, uh, from Bill Sterling, would it not be more practical to let the Salisbury District include churches around East Newmarket rather than uh, from going to Cambridge and then coming back down to Crapo Winget? Lots of mileage and time. Uh, you're, you're exactly right, uh, Bill. Um, again, uh, as a former Eastern District Superintendent, you would know that area. And that's one of the reasons that when um, I drew the maps originally, those uh, churches continued with that Eastern District area because um, you can't go from Salisbury to, to Crapo um, from uh, west to east. You've got to go to Cambridge and then go and then go south to get to those. So uh, technically, uh, if that um, lower shore district superintendent were visiting uh, those churches, they would have to go into the upper shore district for a little bit in Cambridge and uh, I go to the Walmart and turn left and then, um, and then continue uh, down into that district. One of, one of the things that we talked about more than anything was making the districts even in terms of the numbers. So uh, that's, why, that's why we did that. Um, again, it, it, it is what it is. I think, again, those folks can get on 50 and the, and the district superintendent. The Salisbury district had the least amount of change um, so, uh, that's why they, they picked up those churches down there and it's not a perfect plan, but it's just kind of what we came up with. Uh, Christine Bowden says, get the lower shore superintendent a boat. Uh, we, we could do that. There's, there's not a, not a ferry across there. Uh, Joanne Adams, uh, will our annual conference locations change with change to the districts? Um, I'm not sure that question will our annual conference location um, which uh, we've been having them in Wilmington and we've been having them at Princess Anne at UMES. Will they change? Uh, I, I don't think so. Again, uh, it encompasses the full annual conference. We've had annual conference in many different places. If you look back through our history, we've had it in, in Dover. We've had it at Washington College. Uh, we've had them at churches like Bethesda in, in Salisbury and Asbury. We've had them at Easy on Mount Carmel. Um, so we've had them all over our annual conference, and that is always uh, always something that the sessions team and the cabinet are, are looking at, uh, UMES and, and Wilmington. We've had it in Ocean City before. Um, again, there's a lot of expense to go to Wilmington. There was a lot of expense to go to Ocean City. UMES team seems to be the cheapest place, um, but our district realignment does not affect that at all. Okay, Bishop, it looks like uh, there aren't any questions. Uh, oh, here's, here's another one. Um, it says, thank you, Bishop Johnson, Rob, and the district superintendents for your hard work. I'm sure this was not easy. I think this arrangement makes more sense than the original proposal. Thank you for your efforts. I'd like to just add another word if that's okay. okay. Rob, there is a uh, update on Union Wesley from Bill. I don't know if you want to in the chat to us. Yeah, Union Wesley's in the Dover district. Oh, yes, okay, thank you. Yeah, Delaware. yeah. Union Wesley's in Clarksville, Delaware. Uh, it would be in the Delaware district and not the Lower Shore district. Thank you. Thank you, I Bill. Like, uh, yeah, everybody get a, get a load of the list, that yeah. spreadsheet uh, when it's posted and you'll be, able to, uh, you'll be able to identify all the churches. I'd just like to thank Rob for this enormous job. I mean, this has been on him more than anybody. The cabinet has been collaborating along with Rob, but he's led the pack to get this interactive map and do all the legwork. And of course, Rob's served on every district in the conference, so he knows the Route 50 and all this stuff he talks about that I'm, I'm not sure what you're talking about, but I'm glad we got the people on the ground doing the work that know you and love you and are from you. So thanks, Rob. Thanks, superintendents. And thanks to Bill Westbrook, who actually, he had this vision that well, maybe we ought to have a Delaware district. And we sat down and started looking at it, and it just seemed to fit all the things that you all were concerned about. We listened to your 
various comments. Uh, certain churches actually said, we, we lean more toward Delaware. Let us be in Delaware. And, and these were really helpful. So I believe we've listened. I also believe that um, no system is perfect and you're going to have to get used to things that, that are a little different and different is always challenging, but uh, you folks are incredibly resilient and nimble and you love the Lord Jesus Christ and with God, all things are possible. And I can testify that Eastern Pennsylvania went down by two districts and they're not any, any uh, larger than you are a number of churches. And that's worked out swimmingly well. They're really doing well after a year, uh, the adjustments have happened. The committees have right-sized themselves and people have met some new friends and some new talents have shown up on different districts they didn't have before. And we've seen a lot of blessing coming from some of these realignment decisions. So I just ask you to have a positive experience, a positive, uh, report on this, uh, give it a try, be prayerful, be positive, um, and, and all things, uh, keep the mission of the church in, in front of us. It's all about doing a better job with the resources we have, with the people we have to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. That's what we're about. And I know that God will walk alongside of us through all these adjustments and, and we can make a difference in this world and transform it along the way. So that's all I want to say. But again, Rob, thank you. And uh, anything else you want to add? That's it, Bishop. I, I thank you all for attending tonight. This was very well attended. And again, this will all be on the conference website, uh, along with a spreadsheet of a list of churches uh, and, and a picture of the map as well as this recording. So you'll be able to, to watch it all and stop it at certain points and so forth. But it'll all be on the conference website. Very good. God bless. Take care.